I think probably six or seven years ago was the first time I drove an electric vehicle. It was Tesla Model S. I was a I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was neat. It's weird, no sound and all that stuff. And but I still am not to the point where I trust it enough to where I'm I want to change. You know, I mean, I don't think the tech is there yet. I think it no, still no. takes too long to charge. I think it still doesn't go far enough. You know, that kind of a thing. So yes, I, I, th I think ba the battery battery development will be the biggest. Uh, uh, change uh, that will may make an electric car obsolete. If you if you find, for example, batteries back in uh, ten years back had only fifty percent the uh, uh, or maybe capacity thirty percent yeah. the capacity uh, that they have at present. It wasn't until Tesla came uh, entered the market that we got um, electric cars with. Um, say 200 miles range on on the on a on the battery. So um, th there may be capacity issues with batteries and so on, and and uh, the need to change batteries. And you you have new technologies in in the future, uh, battery te technologies or other technologies that may make you um, uh, want to um, to change your car uh, or scrap the car. It's uh, there's also the development of of electric road systems that's um but but that will be beneficial i think if if that's if those uh, come online because there is the idea that instead of stationary charging we could perhaps use electric roads in the future where we can uh, um charge can uh, charge while driving that, that could, and yeah. those See, are that's, tested that's a neat in, idea. Yeah, but you still those have to be able to support the electro, right? Yeah, that's what you know, like, that, that, the end of the day. So, so know, that, they, they would have many um, advantages, but it will also be a huge investment to build them. Matt, what? This is a cool topic that we've kind of transitioned to here. Um, uh, this, I, by the way. I'm having a lot of fun with this. This is really cool, and thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm not. I'm really not trying to be devil advocate or anything like that. But this is this is this is important stuff. So, what are, what are your thoughts on, or how much have you learned about this hydrogen fuel cell for electricity generation within within vehicles? Like it's it, it's something I know Toyota's working on, and probably a lot of other people. That's fascinating to me because yeah. hydrogen is easier to make, so it should be cheaper to provide and get a hold of, and Anyway, so what are your thoughts? It's it may be easier to make, but it's really uh, electric electricity intensive to um, to make because if to drive ten kilometers or ten miles on uh, uh, using a battery powered uh, electric car, you you uh, you need a certain amount of of power uh, to drive the same distance using a uh, hydrogen fuel cell car you'd need twice as much or more than twice as much power uh, to to uh, produce the hydrogen so hydrogen is well it's abundant it's uh, everywhere but you need to um, tear it out, tear it out of um, chemical um, um you got to refine it right the same yeah. way we do so, with so, so you, you need refine. electrolysis to uh, uh, separate the oxygen from the hydrogen in water or or in other um, other liquids, and and to do that, you need a lot of uh, electricity. So instead of doubling uh, the uh, electricity in order to fuel all American cars by uh, all American vehicles with um, uh, electricity to use uh, battery electric uh, vehicles, you'd you'd need to tri triple um, uh, electricity production to use hydrogen so that and there is no um there is no uh, infrastructure at all for the large scale uh, distribution and the large scale production of hydrogen so we'd have to build that from scratch and i don't know how uh, to, uh, toyota are thinking or other other companies are thinking about this because that's really time consuming and and uh, well investment intensive um effort that that would have to be done you know what i wasn't paying attention 15 years ago or 18 years ago when you got into this mats but it, i bet you it sounds a lot like what we were saying then yeah. Boy, that's just gonna <laughs> yeah, be too yeah, much yeah, right what... so and that's i think it gets back to the fact that i think there's technologies multiple technologies that we can leverage and and the market can invest in and it's like it's like make it a race 
you know like hmm. who's going to win this race and because the best technology that's the most efficient that's the most cost effective that should win right it should yes um <laughs> it would be a very costly race because many technologies would be developed. At, a lot of money would be plowed into uh, technologies that wouldn't make it in the end. And I think we would end, end up with a really difficult situation where, where we wouldn't have very well-functioning transportation systems um, a bit into the this development and we would would find that we had blown down um huge amounts of money into um, technologies that were not uh, that that were not uh, of any use in the end so we could in the in the way that nasa did with the for the apollo program they saw that, that they analyzed the, the different uh, options and they they um, basically selected the technologies and the solutions that would would have to be used and because of the very short time frame they had to select and they had to um, procure the development of those technologies and and make sure that the, those technologies were um, uh, were developed to the point where they could make the trip to uh, uh, so safely make the trip to the moon and back. You know so, what? I remember watching a thing with uh, Elon Musk a, a while back where he was talking about electricity and fuel and things like that. Yeah, obviously SpaceX, right? SpaceX ain't using electricity to get into space. The funny, right. the, the funny little um, uh, thing, you know, thing about it is that <laughs> hundred years ago, if we would have banned the use of fossil fuels and only limited to electricity, we'd never got to the moon. Yeah, <laughs> right. So. <laughs> Uh, it's it right is is a little bit of uh, uh okay so I, I i don't i and i again i don't i don't disagree with with you at all matt's i think you're i think you're dead on like we like you don't want to throw a lot of money at a technology that's not going to to work but what if this let's say let's play out a little scenario what happens if the the us the uk let's say france and germany Let's say they all decide by 3035, we're all going to get on board with it. It's going to make a coalition. It's going to be electric. Everybody who has a gas power car, we're going to give you a free electric. We're just going to make it work, right? We're just going to make you work, right? Make it work. The governments love to give away free stuff that's not free anyway. <laughs> um, but, and then, but you know what? China and India decides to say, you guys have fun, pound sand with that electricity. We're staying on fossil fuels and we're gonna and we're gonna develop hydrogen based because Japan's gonna help us out. And they turn out to have the better um uh, the better, more cost effective way and it just turns out to be better. Right? Because there's a, mm. there's a lot of things that are changing even with fossil fuels um that um as technology comes on and they re reuse um, the the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide to produce more energy. There's lots of things that are going on, but what happens if we invest all of our time, money, energy, energy into banning and and we we essentially create a technology that we put all our eggs in that basket and it turns out to be not as good and all of a sudden now we're behind. Yes, <laughs> uh, we we need to realize there are two different <clears throat> uh, types of development. There are things that change and improve and then there's physics and the laws of physics that don't mm. so and you can for example you can improve the efficiency of of uh, petrol and diesel cars because they have a uh, what is it uh, energy efficiency of 25 percent or something like that so there's a huge room for improvement and you can, can get a lot of more lot more mileage out of a of a petrol and diesel car well when you have uh, but with an electric car, it's really uh, different because you already have we already have 95% or more than 90% efficiency of electric uh, cars. So we can't improve that very much. So what if uh, the amount of electricity that's needed today, we know that we'll need almost the same amount of electricity uh, in the future as well, because that's a matter of physics. We can't get beyond 100%. Uh, so there are things that we can can um, uh, change, but there are also the laws of physics with, which we can't. And I'm not sure, but I think that there are uh, laws of physics that 
we could use the laws of physics to investigate how efficient can a hydrogen uh, car become and how how much <clears throat> this twice as uh, as much electricity needed to produce the hydrogen pr yeah producing yeah. it yeah can we get below can can those can, can we uh, improve that so that it becomes just 1.5 or 1.3? Could India uh, take uh, succeed with that? Uh, and uh, or is it is it something that's um, set down by by the laws of physics? Uh, and we also know other things like the you know the learning curve um, that every time we double the the number of units that have been produced of a product, the um, cost of making them tend to be reduced by a certain uh, percentage. So, for example, in, in a chip production, you may have a per percentage of 30% of every time you double the number of chips that have been pr produced. Um, and that's a huge number, of course. In other areas, you, you may have 15 20%. So you can... Um, you can uh, for, forecast the, the improvements and you can also um, well, have a ball, ball, ballpark fee feeling of the likelihood that I think India the way that or the someone companies else. companies are going to solve the, the expense problem because when someone goes out and says, well, I don't want to pay 50% more for a vehicle that's basically the same size and whatever that I have now. I think the way that companies are going to do, they're going to start, if they, a lot of companies are doing it already, I think, they're going to sell them at a loss and it's going to be an as a service model, just like you see with electronics. So some of the biggest electronics manufacturers and companies, they sell their things at a loss, but once they have that in the household in order to use it or to use it to its best capacity, you get addicted to the service, then you're paying a monthly fee for the service. So the course of the lifetime of owning that piece of equipment, in this case, a vehicle, to, to properly use this vehicle, it's going to be $100 a month service fee to get access to everything you need to be able to remote start it from your phone, to be able to use this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and that's, gonna, that's going to bring the margins up because the money's in monthly recurring revenue, not in the one-time purchase. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's, <clears throat> uh, if you could create that and if companies could like sell the cars and then make a monthly revenue on... Uh, on services, that would would be a, a tremendous uh, business idea uh, or a business model for um, uh, for car uh, car makers. But so far, that hasn't been uh, the case, and uh, I don't know. I don't see that coming. Well, you know, I just I just got my wife a new a vehicle for Christmas, and uh, in order to use the mobile app to start the car, uh, to lo remotely lock the doors. Um, to have any sort of geolocation services, if it was stolen, all these kind of things through the through the GM uh, OnStar service and everything that comes along with it, as well as using it as a mobile hotspot and all these really cool features or even using the navigation features that are built in. You have to sign up for a subscription that the, the minimum monthly cost for that bunt, for the, all that is um, $40 a month. $40 yeah. a month. I don't pay <laughs> anything right now outside of you know, I don't pay that much for any kind of minimal type of service. Now, they're going to give me that for three months, totally free. And I'm going to get used to hauling our family around in this vehicle, having a Wi-Fi hotspot that their tablets and their phones are connected to. And it's going to get to a point where I can't live without it. And now they've got me for 40 bucks a month. And then they can increase it like Netflix started at $5 a month. Now it's like 15 mm -hmm. right? And it's just going to gradually get to a point and they're going to find a point where you bend, don't break. Once you break, okay, we're going to stay there. And we're going to keep pushing up against that. And now, I mean, I bought the vehicle one year used. So GM got no money from me on it, right? So they got that money from somebody else. But now they're getting they're going to be getting 40 bucks a month from me for the use of, you know, some tertiary. I could live without them, but I don't want to, right? <laughs> no. So, of course. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I assume, yeah, uh, it could happen. But uh, I think still... Uh, the op opportunity of for car makers to uh, make money from make money from uh, uh, software services is likely to be limited, uh, and that the uh, uh, business models of 
of um, the present uh, <clears throat> will uh, remain. Now that Tesla is also <clears throat> cutting the price on their uh, cars <clears throat> to, um, well, to keep uh, other electric car companies out of the market or or reduce increase their market shares, um, Tesla. Um, I think it's it's unlikely that uh, <clears throat> um, this development will make a real change to uh, to the cost of owning a car. Hey everybody, thanks for watching one of the clips from the Business Line podcast. If you want to see the full episode, click up here. And if you want to see more fun clips, click up here.